Hi, my name is Elden from Crystal Bros, and today I will be showing you the Disney Plug and Play TV Games console. It's a review and a full mouth. So, Disney released this console in 2004 by what's it called? Jack Pacific. It is a plug and play TV console which directly puts plugs into your TV. And in my case, it just plugs into my uh, laptop via an SMI grabber. And the image it will show you is black and white. I have no idea why it is. Maybe it's part of the cables that don't work or function properly. It is a simple console. I picked it up for five euros, which is about six to seven dollars uh, American dollars. The console itself has a power switch for on and off, a menu button, which brings you back to the menu, of course, an LED light indicator saying it's on or off, and a reset button for. I don't know if the console just crashes, I have no idea. This console takes a lot of batteries. It takes four AA batteries. As you can see, I will screw it open. There you go. Four full batteries. No more talking, let's just see what this console is about. Okay, so let me give you a quick run through about the games on this home TV console. It has five games with shows faces of Timon, uh, what is the asshole, Donald Duck, Simba, Stitch, and nah, Aladdin. Each game has its own knockoff 16-bit uh, type of game. Uh, let's start with the Lion King Timon to the Rescue. This is a, some, kind of, some kind of puzzle game in which you have to guide Pumbaa to the other side. So I've played this game before and the main thing about this game is that it doesn't really explain that well what you need to do. So you get like three seconds before you can direct Puma to the other side of the screen. So I've played this game before, so I know how to work this game around. You just have to make, get ready. Come on, man. Okay, get ready. Now the controls are a bit stiff because the joystick isn't that great anymore. I mean, it's 13 years old and I think someone just wrecked it in those 13 years. So there you go. It's a pretty simple game, just guide Puma to the other side of the screen. And if you're like 10 years old, you would think this is fucking boring. The next game is Donald Duck and it's golfing. So I have never been a golfer. I've played Jack Nicklaus on the Super Nintendo like 15 or 20 years ago. And I know nothing about golf, I swear. It has a one player, two player game. I think two player game is just giving each other a turnaround if one player fails to hit a hole holding one or something. Oh, you can, you can fast forward with the big button. Um, so here's the thing. I think uh, you can move around the joystick to see some of the course and only down and the hole, the hole itself is upwards somewhere. You can't see it yet. But you have to move around to check where you want, want to hit that golf ball. So I want to hit it right here and some power bar on the right side corner will show you the indicator of how, how hard you can strike the ball. So what I don't like about this game is that how it's not fast paced. It's very, very, very fucking slow like every golf game out there. Then there's this other Lion King game. I think Lion King was his favorite. I mean, it's my favorite Disney movie as well. So they put two Lion King games on it. This one is from Simba. And actually what it is, it just dropped fruit. And it's some sort of, sort of Tetris clone in which you have to match four fruits. Line them up. I have to say, this is some, one of the most enjoyable games on the, the system itself. So you just line up fruits. I'm not even paying attention because I find it a uh, not a very good Tetris clone. No, oh there you go. It even it doesn't even have to match four in a line. You could just match four things together and it just it's okay. Stitch, Stitch Search of Paradise. So what I remember of when I watched Lilo and Stitch, the the movie, animated movie is that Stitch was already in paradise. I think he was in Hawaii together with Lilo. And why is he actually in a cave? I have no idea why. It's because paradise on Hawaii sounded much more better. 
This game is one of the hardest games on uh, the system itself because the controls are so god awful. I mean, you have to push really hard on that controller to make stitch. You can even hear the controller squeezing, man. It's just... So I bought this console uh, a second at a, at a second hand store, <laughs> and I think the, the former owners of this console just had the same frustrations as I have, just almost wrecking these buttons just to make Stitch jump to somewhere. So <laughs> going to the exit almost broke this thing off because it's you have to move to the right, but it's so frustratingly hard. So the next game is Aladdin, the last game on the system. This is um, what I call not even a cheap knockoff from the Super Nintendo or Mega Drive version. It is a really crap down version of those two. So the thing is you have to move Aladdin around on a marketplace in this level then. So here's the thing, if you if you bought this in 2004 or even later, you're, you already had, if you like games, you already had a PlayStation 2 or an original Xbox. You would not have played this. This would only make you much more angrier. You could play Ico or Shadow of the Colossus or some kind of Resident Evil game instead of this cheaply made poor man's version of the Super Nintendo Mega Drive version of Aladdin. You could even play the Mega Drive version which is a lot better and that came out in like 1992 or 3. So what do I like about the graphics gameplay and audio? I do like the fact that it's uh, representing the whole Disney scheme. Uh, in a whole, the graphics look good. It has all the like the, the Mickey Mouse uh, themed uh, hand. Um, the animations look good. The characters look good. Uh, that's about it. But I think that this system could pack put much more power in it and much more max of RAM uh, to make it work even better. I think it's a fault of the developers that they didn't push the the console to its limits. The gameplay itself is just really cheap knockoffs of 16-bit uh, ga era games that are better played on its original consoles like the Mega Drive or the Super Nintendo. You just don't want to play these games anymore which are lackluster, do not have any safe options. Um, why would you even bother playing a game like Aladdin if it doesn't bring you anything, not even some kind of satisfaction or a mid-boss or an end-boss or something like a good ending screen. And the audio, the audio is pretty good for a 16-bit, I think it's a 16-bit system, uh, with good sound quality and good music. There are a bit of loops there, here and there on uh, the Stitch game and the Aladdin game, but overall it has a uh, good sound quality. So what do I don't like about the graphics? They're pretty soft part. If you, if you, if you know Disney, um, they are a creator of quality most of the times. And this is just issued by some Chinese company who uh, has some Chinese developers who made cheaply and poorly made knockoff games with a Disney license on it. If you can see past through that, you have some games that are enjoyable for like two minutes. When it comes to gameplay, it's exactly that. It is not something you want to play for more than two minutes because it will make you frustrated. The games do not have any uh, bonus factor at the end of a level. They do, they do not give you the satisfaction of a real game. Even a game like on a Mega Drive Super Nintendo has some satisfaction to it. To a uh, an end boss or a uh, um, yeah, like bonuses or high scores or even a save. This this console has nothing to offer you that. So what I don't do I don't like about the audio. Um, yeah, the thing is it's a 16-bit console. You cannot pack great audio files into it. It does its job, it's not high quality, and even uh, on my computer it sounds okay-ish. I think it would be more better sounding on a CRT, original CRT. So that was the review of the Disney plug and play TV games console. If you like this review, check out the other console reviews that we made in the past, um, and do subscribe. I mean, it helps us a lot and it gives me more uh, satisfaction and effort to make more of these videos. So please do subscribe.